from Biohacking Wellness. And today, what we're going to cover is the right way and the wrong way to do a crunch or a curl or whatever you want to call it. Sit-ups is what most people call it. It can be a really functional exercise, but here's the problem. Most people don't do it correctly, so it actually can cause problems, it can cause structural issues within the body, and it can definitely cause injury. And most people who have back injuries tend to not do this type of exercise because they think that they can't. So you know what? I'm going to show you that you can do this type of exercise if you do it right and if you do it safe. So hold on, we're going to get started. important to strengthen your core. So here's something that's kind of fun. So grab a partner and we'll get started, okay? So all you really need to do this is a ball. So we're going to take the ball, you're going to stand and you're going to hold the ball in front of you and just give it a little press so that you don't lose it. And then you want to have somebody punch the ball in several different areas, on the top, on the sides, in the front. And what you're going to see is you are really going to see how those abs move to stabilize that motion. It's really kind of cool, okay? The other way you can obviously see them move, and this is a quite obvious way, is that if you put your hands across your rib cage and cough. <coughs> Okay, so that's what those muscles do. That's why the small little bits of breathing are perfectly fine and they're enough to get you any result that you want. Okay, so we're about to get down to the floor and cover a couple of things. First, we're gonna cover the don'ts, okay? So what I am not gonna do is I am not gonna put my feet on the floor. Why? Because that's a closed chain exercise. Closed chain exercises are not functional. So for the purpose of the majority of what you're going to see me do, unless you are injured, and then I will give you an alternative, we are going to take our feet off the floor. And it's going to be in a 90 degree position. So that 90 degree position is where we bring the knees up directly over the hip, and then the legs and heels come out, and the heels are perpendicular to the floor. That's our starting position, 90 degree angle, always. Why? Because it activates the transverse abdominal. Now go ahead and feel yours if you're trying this with me, and you're gonna see that you can feel the activation of that muscle, okay? Okay, so here's what we don't wanna see. We don't wanna see feet on the floor with a big pelvic tilt. Why is that? Because when you pelvic tilt, you are actually compressing the discs anteriorly, meaning to the front of the body, which is one of the main places that people get injured is in their discs. And it's usually because there's too much curling, too much crunching, or they've bent over and they've done something that just didn't sit very well. So we don't put feet on the floor to activate the transverse ab. You really want to have your feet off the floor in a 90 degree angle. So let's hack it just a little bit further. I have a three pound ball. I'm gonna take that 90 degree angle, open my knees and squeeze this three pound ball. So not only am I now getting the transverse ab, but I'm also connecting the inner thighs. And when you do that, they call that the abdominal sling. So everything's working together it keeps those knees right in line. We want to make sure we're not dropping the heels and getting lazy. We want to keep those heels right up there. Okay? So here's what the crunch is going to look like. Normally, if I were to begin my crunch, I would start with my head on the ground and curl up. And this is what people do. They repeatedly curl their head and neck off the floor. Well, I don't want to work on my head and neck muscles. I want to work on my abdominals. So what we're gonna do is use Pilates principle and we're going to stabilize, meaning I'm gonna get myself in the position where I'm gonna do the work. Then I'm gonna mobilize. And abs are breathing muscles. So when we're using the abs, really all we're doing is breathing. We're not really curling. So it's gonna look like this. Now make sure you've got a little bit of a space in your low back so that your hip bones and your rib cage are touching but you've got this little mouse house, 
no bigger than the size of a mouse underneath your low back. So you're stabilizing and you're ready to mobilize. We're gonna move now. And when we do that, all we're gonna do is exhale. As I exhale, my ribs slide down to my hips. As I inhale, they slide away. That's a proper crunch. That's all you need to do, okay? You don't need to crunch, you don't need to curl, you don't need to pull on the neck. That's all you need to do, okay? And that's a proper crunch. Okay, we're gonna add a little variation to that crunch. Let's say you wanted to make it just a little bit harder, okay? Well, let's say we want a little bit of a six pack. We're starting to work with this and it's working very well. We get back into our position. And as we lift this time, we're gonna lift to a tempo. By tempo, I'm gonna either lift for a specific amount of counts and lower for a specific amount of counts. So I'm gonna start with a lift for one and a lower for three. And here's what it looks like. So I'm lifting, exhale. I'm coming back one and two and three. I am not going back to the floor. I'm gonna exhale. I'm sliding and breathing and I'm inhaling back and back and back. There's my three counts. Exhale, back, back, and back. Let's say I'm gonna do eight of these, which I'm not gonna do the whole eight. I'm gonna take you to the next step, which is a two and two. So now I'm going up one and two, one and two. One and two. I'm going up three, two, three, down one. Up three, two, one, down one. Up three, two, one, down. Pretty simple extremely effective and anybody can do it now one more thing i want to show you before i go okay so after a while that's not going to become so much of a challenge you can only work with tempo for so long if you're just doing functional exercise that's going to be just fine all you really need to do since abs are endurance muscles is do more, do more sets, do more, you know, and switch it around a little bit. Now you can put a bunch of different exercises together and do these in the beginning and then again at the end. So really it's your choice. Okay, but I'm gonna show you how to increase with weight when you're doing a crunch so you can actually build those little bumps and ravioli or whatever you wanna call them that we call the six pack. So I'm gonna take my ball and again, this time, I'm going to keep my legs at my 90 degree angle, but I'm going to put the ball on my forehead as I lift. So now I'm just lifting with the ball. And again, I am only moving enough to breathe in and breathe out. That is all you need. You can do a few little crunches at the top with some quick exhales if you want to do that. But that's a great way to add weight and start to build and really challenge the abdominals. Okay? I hear all the time, but Sandra, I can't keep my heels or my knees over my hips with my feet in the air. My back is so bad that I can't do that. Well, that's okay. We have something that's not as bad as a closed chain and not quite as good as an open chain, but it works very, very well for people with bad backs. So when you're beginning, you just grab your ball, put one heel on top, the other heel on top, and you just lightly press. So we're not putting a foot into the ground. We're really only just pressing through the heel. And now we can do our little crunch. Remember, exhaling, Inhaling, that's all it is. Never coming back to the starting position until we're done with our set, only coming to the shoulders. I hope you really enjoyed that. Have a great day. For more fitness tips like this, see me at www.biohackingwellness.com. Glad you could join me today. 
If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button.